Uh, but I think we ought, we're going to go into the backdrop people. This came up in my last book. I put it into convoluted four. I could go into a lot more strange concepts, and they may come up with the questioning. But in convoluted four, I've got this concept of the backdrop people. The reason I've got Guy here is because in his lecture, he talked about backfill people. And I said, wait a minute. That's the same idea, and he never reads my books. That's right. I don't read any books uh, these days purely for fear of having contamination <laughs> from other people's work and it being stuck in my subconscious and then being regurgitated in my own stuff. So I don't touch anybody's books. I haven't for and years. I don't years read now. anybody else's books either because I don't want to be influenced. But here he's talking about backfill people and I've got backdrop people. And so I asked him to come up because uh, everybody keeps wanting more information about it. And all I had was what I wrote about. Well, now I'm getting more information because it's coming through more and more people. It's like when the concept is ready, then we get more and more information keeps coming in. They know when I'm ready and I'm supposed to present it to the world. Okay. Well, the idea, nothing is real anyway. Everything is energy. Everything is illusion. This building where you're sitting right now did not even exist until you collectively chose to come here tonight or today. Wrap your head around that. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to make sense because every time I brought that up, they'll say, what? <laughs> it's like a Stephen King movie they had one time where nothing existed before they got there. That's right. I mean, what you're doing is you're creating your own realities, and now you've created a huge group reality. And without the huge group reality, this wouldn't exist. But this shows you, too, how powerful your mind is. Because everything you see, everything that's around you, everything in your life, you're creating and putting there to fill up your, your world. So that means you can create anything. Nothing is impossible. You can change your life. You can have anything in your life at all. They told me one of the biggest lessons you come to Earth to learn is how to manipulate energy. You can't get out of the Earth school and graduate till you learn how to manipulate energy. What does that mean? Create. create. You have to learn to create. Because this is how powerful your mind is. You can create anything. So that means every time you go anywhere, even go back to your house, it is recreated every time you go into it. I always wonder, where does it go in the meantime? <laughs> it's just space. <laughs> back into whatever. But when these concepts began coming up, you know, this is it's a little unnerving. But the backdrop people was really uh, scrambled my brain. And everywhere I go now, they'll say, tell us more about the backdrop people. OK. You're creating. This is your movie. This is your play. You are, are the, it's all that life is anyway. It's just a game. It's just a play. It's just an illusion. You're going to leave here with your brains really spinning. <laughs> Okay, but I've had people say that when they go through the death experience in the past life, they look back and they'll say, it's just a play. I see all the actors on stage getting ready to play their parts. I see the actors in the wings getting ready to come on stage and play their parts. It's just a play. But when I was there, I took it so seriously, but now it's like a blink of an eye. So you are the producer, director, and actor in your own play. You're also the script writer, but the script isn't written. It's written as you go along. So you see you can change it any time you want. We get so trapped into thinking there's no way out. Not, you know, that this is all there is. 
when you realize how powerful your mind is, you can create anything you want. This is the goal, the main thing of being alive, is knowing, learning how to create. And now when the veil is thinning, we're moving into this new earth, we're into the shifting, we're bringing all these abilities back. This is what you're supposed to learn how to do. Okay, but this is your movie. Now they said, it, it wouldn't be a very good movie, would it, if you were the only person in the movie? Isn't that true? They said people like people around them. So what they would, we do, we don't know this, none of this is done consciously. You have the backdrop people. When you cast a movie, what do you do? You cast all these extras, don't you? To fill in the background, the backdrop. He calls them the backfill. You cast all the extras to play all the parts of all the people. Those are the backdrop people. And when I go into a crowded airport now, I am thinking, oh boy, look at all the backdrop people I've just created. <laughs> I shouldn't have put so many into this. <laughs> but this is what makes it even stranger. The backdrop people are not real. They're not real people. They're not anything. They are energy. It's just energy. Everything is energy. That's why I want him to come up here because, come on up, guy. Thank because you. when I was asking about him, I said, you got your information your way, I got mine, and we were comparing what we've got because I had so many questions. And now I'm getting more information about it. And so I think everybody here is real. I'm not sure. <laughs> Pinch yourselves quickly and see if you are real. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But um, I know we're going to have a lot of questions about this concept. <laughs> um, they said, because you couldn't go through your own movie by yourself. You have to have other people. Now, the people in your life, those are real. Those are the ones that are on the evolutionary plant, path. We have come in to evolve, to grow, to learn lessons, to reincarnate. We're the ones that are evolutionizing. They're real, and you've made these contracts with all these other people, but these other ones are not. And I said, uh, do they have souls? They said, no. They're just energy. They said it's holographic. It's like being on the holodeck on Star Trek. You know, when you're on the holodeck, the, uh, they interact with these people, they're real, but then the minute they walk off the holodeck, all these people dissipate. And you're getting the same idea, aren't you? Yeah, I'm getting slightly, just a very slight difference, though, because mine's related to the, the real people, um, because as we evolve, we move out of this particular frequency and therefore there needs to be a critical mass of individuals to allow those who are still needing to move up to, to operate and so they, the, these backfill people come into play then. So there's two, there's two parts to the to Well the they same said, thing. I said, uh, can they advance? And they said yes, they can evolve. There's a possibility of that. But they're still not on the uh, evolutionary path that we are on. They're different. They're a completely different energy set. The, the energetic genre of mankind is a very high frequency, very high e energy. And these guys, are, they're, they're, they're lower. Lower, denser energy. Earth is the densest, lowest planet in the universe to live on. It's the most difficult planet to live on. When you come here, they said we're at the bottom. The so dense and heavy. So a lot of these people are made up of that dense energy. That's right. And the thing is that you can tell them. I mean, He's learned you know, to tell them apart. I haven't yeah. yet. I mean, you just tell them. You can, if you will go into a, a shopping mall, for instance, or a football game or, or, or a bas basketball game, or anywhere with a, a large group of people, just walk around and look 
and, and feel what's going on. And you can spot them a mile away. They, they stick out. They're, they're not the same energy set. I mean, you, clearly there's none here. If you learn how to, to <laughs> if you learn how to feel yeah. energy. Yeah, absolutely. But it's it's amazing that it, I found it quite a dichotomy, you know, that I couldn't understand how we could ascend, but how everybody else could exist when there's the, the population is disappearing one by one and, 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 and in tens. And then the information came through in a meditation in March last year that there's a there's a series of backfill going on where there has to be a critical mass. And I was amazed when Dolores said that it's, it's, you know, there's, a, there's a similar thing going on for creating the, um, the necessary environments for us to evolve by maintaining an environment holographically as well. It's amazing. But me and Julie have had a lot of discussion about this too. And we said, what would happen if I would go up and interact with one of these people? Because, you know, you see them talking and all of that. What would happen if I would go up and interact with them? Would they be real? Then I think it goes along with the idea, okay, you've got your movie. Now you suddenly gave one of these extras a bit part. They have a little speaking part in the movie. <laughs> but um, a lot of times, too, when you interact with people, it's the way you interact. You know, sometimes if they need help, or you're talking to them like that, that to me is, you are helping your own evolvement, but maybe you're helping them also. Yeah, I mean these, these backfill, in, the information I've been getting, the backfill people, they also evolve. And they, they don't get the chance to have individualized free will. So this is, in general, the first time they've incarnated. So when they're working with us, they, they gain evolutionary content as a, as, as a result of that. So they're benefiting. They're helping us continue to evolve and those individuals who are left behind but still evolving by being here and backfilling, basically. Um, because also he's found that the ones that are very negative, they're like the bottom. Those are the very low, dense energies. But they're here. all of this is here to teach us something. That's what it's all about. That's what life is all about anyway. What are you learning? Everything that happens to you, you created to learn from it. So you hear about these things on TV, the murders and the, the violence going on. How does it affect you? What do you learn from that? That's the lesson of these other entities, to teach us something. And the thing is that in them doing what we abhor, we learn how to not do it. So we, we naturally move ourselves out of that zone, out of that frequency. Yeah, they've told me that before, and it was in my book, Between Death and Life, that if you didn't have these as examples, you wouldn't know what not to do from a moral standpoint. That's right, that's right. And it's important to observe what is considered to be wrong because there are definitely universal laws being worked with here and we're showing we are shown every day what not to do so that we can avoid it and take a faster track to, to increase our frequency and ascend in the process because everybody has bad things that happen in their life but they have put them there before you come into the life, you make your plan, and you make the plan of the events in your life that are gonna help you grow. And I have so many clients that have had horrible childhoods and horrible lives, but I always ask them, what did you learn from it? That was the purpose. That's why they put those events in their life to learn from. And some of them will say, well, I didn't learn anything. It was just a bad experience then guess what? According to the law of karma, the law of what we're here for, you have to repeat that class until you learn that lesson. So I tell them, if you learned even one thing from the circumstance, that was the reason for you creating it. Look how powerful your minds are. <laughs> I found out that's something called cyclic karma where if you don't learn the first time, it gets harder the second time. And then oh, it gets yeah. harder the third time. <laughs> and you're brought back with the same people, 
same circumstance. You don't get out of anything. Same people, some same circumstances. You just have to repeat it over, and it's always harder the next time. Just like a class in school. So you don't, and they, some people will tell me, well, I don't want to have anything to do with that person anymore. I don't want them in my life anymore. I certainly don't want to have to do it again. And I said, you better work it out now. That's the law of karma. You see, we've been taking baby steps so far in my books and in the uh, conferences, and now I guess it's getting to where we're beginning to be ready for the hard stuff. We're progressing into college, maybe. <laughs> Absolutely. And I just want to very quickly pick up on something that Dolores said about creation and what we're creating here. One of the things I've picked up recently is that we've all part of creating the multiverse, not just this locale here, but we're all creating the multiverse. So th think about that when you're starting to create something small, <coughs> but actually you're part of something much bigger. Julia, you want to come up? Where's she at? She said she was we right here. Okay, come on up, Julia. I like to have her up when we go to questions. But um, I was getting more information about it, and they kept saying it's holographic. But I think now our minds are ready for this kind of information, and we can understand it, because you're great and powerful beings. You're not at the mercy of the world. I hate it when I get clients coming in that are in the victim mode. Oh, you don't know what happened to me. I mean, this is a horrible life, et cetera, et cetera. You listen to this for about an hour, then I tell them, oh, for Pete's sakes, get out of the victim mode. Because everything that happened, you created it for yourself. You want to stand up here or what?